Hello and welcome to Dixon's HP Expander instructional video. I'm Eric Lemon, your host. Today we're going to be expanding a 1 inch and 2 inch petroleum hose using hold all petroleum fittings. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about the HP Expander. This expander is a pull through type expander, it's a manual expander. This can be mounted to a surface as you see here, or it can be mounted into a bench vise. It is manual. It comes with a few different parts and pieces that I want to go over with you briefly. On the top of the body, you have a drive screw. It's, uh, it actually locks in place the drive nut and the thrust bearing. These are the internal pieces, your thrust bearing, your drive nut. It also comes standard with a thrust connector, has two pins. These pins align with the slots on the body. You have a handle that comes in two parts. This handle threads right into the drive nut. You also have a drive screw that's keyed. Comes with a drive screw nut. You want to lubricate this shaft with graphite grease on a regular basis. The other thing to keep in mind is that for sizes up to one inch, you will use the end that's tapped and threaded. For sizes above one inch, you'll use the opposite end where the key is. So that's the parts and pieces that come with the HB Expander. When you do mount the HB Expander, you want to make sure you leave enough room so that when you're doing the expansion process, you don't hit the handles on anything. Let's talk about some of the component parts that you're going to need to make a full hose assembly. In every instance, you're going to need a bell reducer. In this case, we're doing a one inch size, so we have a two by one inch bell reducer. It's two by one inch because we're going to thread the two inch portion right onto our thrust connector here. This particular hold all petroleum fitting has male threads. So if we thread this in, to our thrust connector, we could then just simply thread on our hold all petroleum part. If we were going to do a female fitting, such as this, take a male close nipple, thread it into your bell reducer, and now you could do one inch female. So when you're doing these fittings, those are component parts that you need, and then of course you're going to also need the corresponding punch to pull through and make the expansion. Okay. Now that's on a one inch. If we take this apart, I told you earlier we're going to do a two inch fitting as well. You have a two by two coupling that you're going to use here. You could take and thread your male fitting right into here, very simply. Once again, if you want to do female at the two inch size, you just take the thrust connector out, thread it into your female piece, and then put it in place. And then of course, you're going to want to have the correct punch that's going to go onto your drive screw to complete that expansion process. Okay, so it's very simple. So the parts and pieces you need in each instance are going to be a connector and or bell reducer. You need a ferrule and you need your fitting and you need your correct punch. And that's how you're going to make your hose assemblies. Before we begin the coupling process, let's talk about the importance of hose preparation. It's important that each and every time you're preparing a hose that you cut it square, that you clean it out, and that you use a diameter tape which will have a size in 60 fourths to measure the OD of the hose. You want to do that each and every time. The reason and purpose for doing that is because if you select the wrong size ferrule from the Dixon catalog, because as you can see on each size you have corresponding sizes within that grouping. And if you choose the wrong size ferrule, if it's too big, you could cause a hose ejection. If it's too small, you could actually cause the hose to fail as well because you have nowhere for cold flow of the rubber and you're, and you're putting too much tension on the hose. So 
it's important to choose the correct size. So each and every time you're doing a hose coupling, you want to measure your hose. Okay, it's very important. I've measured this hose, so we're ready to begin this process. I'm going to start with a one inch size. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is thread on my bell reducer. The next thing I'm going to do is put my drive screw in place. The way you know you have the drive screw in the correct location for the one inch size is you're going to run this drive screw just until it gets flush with the end of the bell reducer here. So now that I'm flush with the bell reducer, I'm ready for the next step. The next step is I'm going to take my petroleum fitting, my one inch fitting, we're going to thread it into the bell reducer. And then I'm going to take the corresponding punch, we're going to thread that into the drive screw. You can secure this using a half inch wrench. In this case, I have a half inch wrench and an adjustable wrench. I want to go ahead and tighten that punch in place. Once it's tight, you can go ahead and snug it up. You can do that by turning the shaft counterclockwise. And once you feel that it's, the plug is snug, you want to stop. You don't want to start the expansion process just yet. Okay. Next, you thread on your handles. Once that's complete, take your hose, your correct corresponding ferrule, slide the ferrule over the OD of the hose, press it all the way down so it's flush with the hose. Next, go ahead and slide your hose in place. Now, a couple of things. Number one, these fittings are already pre-lubricated. You don't need to put any lubricant on the plug, so that's all taken care of for you. When you insert the fitting into the hose, you only want to go so far as to leave a 1 8 inch gap approximately between the bottom of the fitting and the top of the ferrule. And the reason for this 8 inch gap is to allow for cold flow of the rubber over time. You need to have a pocket there in place. So we're going to go ahead and push this in place. Get about an eighth of an inch here. Once I'm at an eighth of an inch, I stop the insertion process, take the ferrule, push it up against the bottom of the fitting and now we are ready to expand the hose. You're going to expand the hose by turning the handles in the clockwise direction. Once you begin this coupling process turning the handles in the clockwise direction you never want to turn the handles counterclockwise. If you do that in the middle of the expansion process you can actually damage the drive screw. Okay. You will know that you have properly expanded the hose. You will feel the plug go all the way through and that will let you know that you have completed the expansion process. So once we've completed that process, simply pull it out. And there you have a completed hose assembly. So now we're going to couple the two inch size. We've already measured our hose. We know what ferrule we need. We have our fitting. So let's begin this process. I'm going to start by putting on my two by two coupling. Next, my drive screw. Remember, again, we're going to use the side that's keyed. And for your information, when you're putting this in place, you're going to use a good portion of this drive screw for this expansion because the two inch is a much larger size. So to give you a little bit of information that will help you in this process, if you just leave about a half inch, maybe slightly over a half inch of the shaft hanging out of the back here, that's about where you want to be when you're going to expand the two inch size. Okay. 
So I feel pretty good about what we have on that. So now we're going to go ahead and thread in our male fitting. The larger plug has a keyway. Just line the keyway up with the key on the shaft. And again, make sure that the tapered end is going in. Your drive nut, you're going to thread that on the back here. Okay. Go ahead and put your handles in place. Okay, you can go ahead and snug this up. As soon as you feel it snug, stop. You don't want to start the expansion process. Okay, now you're ready. Take your hose. Again, once again, you'll take your ferrule, put it on the OD, make sure that it is flush as far down as you can get it. Same process. You want to make sure you leave that eighth inch gap for cold flow, just like we did on the one inch size. Right about here. Push the ferrule up. Now you're ready to begin the expansion process on this two inch size. Remember, you're going to turn it clockwise. And again, once you begin this process, you never go counterclockwise or you will damage your drive screw. Again, you will feel the plug go all the way through the fitting. So now that we're through, pull it out. Now you have proper hose assembly. Thank you for watching and as always, if there was ever any questions or concerns considering couplings, considering procedures, please feel free to contact Dixon. Dixon, the right connection.